Today, I'll be showing you a simple trick to stabilize your car's rear end in Gran Turismo 7 without using traction control, meaning you'll get to keep all that sweet, sweet lap time by putting all of your power down. At the very end, I'll also show you an additional tweak that the LSD tuners don't normally talk about, which will help you go the rest of the way. So be sure to stay tuned. Let's go. No time to mess around, we're getting straight into it today. We'll be using my lightly tuned Ford Focus RS to demo this. The Focus is a four-wheel drive car, but this will work equally well, if not even better on FR and MR cars. I'll be running you through four different laps of Brands Hatch, with the only things changing being my suspension and differential torque vectoring settings. In this first run, we're using stock suspension and stock torque vectoring, meaning the car is going to be very floppy and put more power down through its rear wheels than the front. Here you can see the settings we'll be running and of course all the other mods on the car, which will remain the same throughout all of these tests. Okay, so this is less about the lap time that I'm going to get, more about the feel of the car. As you can see, the car getting very, very light over that crest there, having to do a lot of counter steer to keep the car stable over that as it gets weightless. Now, as we aim at the two board here, braking hard for T1, we get a bit of snap on the entrance, but not too bad. We managed to pull it in. Massive oversteer moment over that crest. As you can see, the car not very stable at all, transferring its weight way too much as we brake hard for that hairpin. Not too bad. And then... Massive, massive snap on the exit there. That is what we're trying to tune out of this car. That's what I want to showcase with its default setting. Again, a massive snap on the exit. Of course, Gran Turismo 7 absolutely riddled with these snap oversteer moments. The default LSD settings are very, very strange. The weight transfer effect is a little bit over-exaggerated in some circumstances, especially with stock suspension as we have here. So one of the main things I want you to watch out for is that snap oversteer behavior mid-corner and especially on corner exit. You can see here on the high speed corner, not as bad, not as bad. Let's see if we can cut through here. A little bit of a snap on the exit there, not what you want, but well, sort of control. The car fighting me with its weight transfer some somewhat bizarre handling here. Now, this is something that Polyphony has to work on, but in the meantime, we're going to offer you our best tune to avoid this, as we get another massive oversteer moment on the exit of the second last corner. Now, for the very last corner again, that very weightless crest. Not too bad, a little bit more of a composed entry through there. And let's see what sort of a time we get on our stock suspension run. 129.0. Now for this run, as you can see, we're moving to the upgraded balance. Same tires, but we're changing our suspension to fully customizable, but leaving it a complete default, exactly what it comes with. We're also changing the differential to fully customizable and entering the torque vectoring center differential, allowing us to do a 50-50 power distribution between the front and the rear wheels. All right, lap number two, let's see how we go. So, oh, still weightless there. It's, it's very, very difficult to tune that behavior out. That's really not something we can do a lot about over those weightless crests. But here we go for T1, braking hard at the two board. We turn in massive snap on the entrance and then just followed by a wash of understeer. Extreme understeer through there. So that's kind of bizarre. Braking hard for the hairpin now. Massive understeer moment, completely missed the apex. Coming back around, bit of a snap on the exit. And again on T3, completely missed completely misusing the entire exit curb because we can't even hit the apexes. So as you can see, upgrading the suspension in and of itself is not the answer to our problems. So far it's created a bunch of corner entry understeer on this car and a bunch of mid corner understeer as well, but we still have the snaps on the exit. So it's almost like the balance of the car has actually gotten worse. The high speed corner now. Massive understeer moment. I'm having to over slow for the corner just to not shoot off the track. Absolutely horrible balance for the car like this. So buying more expensive suspension is not necessarily the answer. You need to know how to tune it as well. You need to know what you're doing with the suspension in order to make it worth the purchase. Second last corner again as we turn in a bit earlier, having to over slow, not too bad, but I'm having to over slow for the corners now. I'm not able to throw the car in as aggressively as I'd like. And for the last corner, one more time, that weightless crest, just understeering me off the track. Just a terribly 
handling car there with the upgraded suspension. Not necessarily what we'd expect for a time of 128.3, still notably faster than our first run, 7 tenths of a second. Now we're going in for our fully tuned balance for the first time. We set our suspension to fully customizable and take our body height adjustment, aka ride height, down to the minimum in order to help stabilize the car. We take our rear anti-roll bar up by one in order to give the car more of an oversteer balance on corner entry and mid-corner, while increasing the natural frequency, aka the suspension stiffness, in order to further stabilize the car, keeping the ratio between front and back the same. Negative camber we jack up to about 3.5 degrees on the front to help the car turn in and on the rear we go to about negative 3 degrees. This should make the car a lot more friendly to rotation. The differential we set to fully customizable and this is the really important part. The acceleration sensitivity is the magic setting here. We want to lower this almost as much as possible because this will help the car become way more predictable on throttle. It will give you a way wider band of acceleration without snapping out on you. In this case I set both to 10. Braking sensitivity is the inverse. The higher you set this, the more understeer the car will exhibit under coasting or braking behaviors, while the lower it is, the more oversteer. So obviously we set it a little bit lower to help the car turn in a bit more naturally. The torque vectoring center diff, we take up to 50-50, meaning that half the power is distributed to the front wheels and half to the rears. And as you can see, the rest of the mods on the car are identical to the other runs. So let's see how we go. Okay, our fully tuned run, exciting times. Get a bit of a snap through there, but you can see the car is immediately more stable. It's following the line I set for it. I'm finally, for the first time, able to drive this thing as I want to around Brands Hatch. Braking hard at the two board, turning in exactly the line that I want. Clipping that apex, using all of the runoff on the exit. Braking hard under the gantry here. Slowing the car down just enough. Pulling it in, a little bit of understeer, but that was due to my bad driving more than anything. No snap on the exit for the first time. Braking hard over the apex there, using all of the runoff. Bit of a snap, but nothing uncontrollable. Again, this is not magic. Bear in mind, TC is completely off. So you do still have to modulate your throttle foot, but it does make life a heck of a lot easier here. As you can see me diming the throttle, absolutely no problem here whatsoever. So we shoot on down toward our high speed turn. So far hasn't provided us any problems on any of the prior runs. How's it going to go now? You can see the car is way more prone to turning in. Able to maximize way more of the track geometry. Yes, using that inside, using all of it. Finally able to drive the car as I want to. Braking hard at that one board, turning in. Massive cut through there. Car super stable on the exit. Not a problem at all. Cutting through the second last corner. I missed the apex and that was completely due to my own bad driving. That wasn't understeer created by the tune. And now coming in for the very last corner. Not too bad. Bit of understeer, bit of natural understeer through there. So I'd say the car balance is about 85 to 90% there. Could still use a bit more tuning, but on the whole, vastly improved for a time of 127.9. Our first time in the 127s. This last tune is to show you just how important the acceleration sensitivity setting is. This is the magic setting for us. So instead of having it down to 10, we're jacking it all the way up to 60 while keeping all the settings exactly the same as our fully tuned run. Look at what this does for our lap. All right, for our last lap where we've thrown it all away, I want to show you how the car's balance changes on the corner exit specifically. Its balance should be exactly the same on corner entry and mid-corner, but what we're expecting is a lot of potential snap oversteer on the exit. So let's see. As we put the massive snap on the exit, that compression should have stabilized the car, but it absolutely didn't. Going into the hairpin now, I'd be very ginger on the throttle, so ginger, but a oh, massive snap on the exit. So you can see this setting is complete sabotage to your car. Once again, it's just, it's a driving like this is an absolute joke. And this is a four wheel drive car, 50 50 power distribution. You can imagine how horrible this would be in a rear wheel drive car putting out over 400 brake horsepower, even uphill, where the gravity should naturally stabilize the car. This showcases the current worst of the GT7 physics model. Now, this would not be happening this badly in real life. This is definitely a shortfall in the current physics model and something that Polyphony needs to fix. So for the time being, our best answer is to just lower the acceleration sensitivity part of the LSD 
and <laughs> avoid experiences like this at all costs. As you can see, the car just fishtailing everywhere. You want to avoid these high acceleration LSDs at all costs. And for the second last corner, one last time. Massive snap, just like every other corner, basically. Not the way that you want to be driving. In real life, this would generally mean that you're putting more power down, but all of this power in GT7 is currently being wasted because none of it can actually adhere to the road. There's just no friction model essentially connecting those tires to the ground. As we get not a terrible time, but not a great time either. 128.6, but not a repeatable, not a consistent driving style that you want to be dealing with in long races, that's for sure. So what's the takeaway from this? Well, currently the LSD is one of our best tools to tune out GT7's snappy on throttle behavior until Polyphony patch up their physics model. There's a substantial lack of friction between the tire and the road for the purposes of modeling traction under power, leading to a sort of slip angle free fall rather than a gradual decline, making many of the cars uncharacteristically challenging to drive. If you want a good example of this, just try driving the stock Porsche GT3 RS, one of the most well-renowned driver's cars in existence, known for its off-throttle rotation, followed by on-throttle understeer, which in GT7 is just oversteer, followed by even more oversteer. While we wait for the fix, assuming we want to stay away from traction control as much as possible, what we want to do is utilize the LSD settings to our advantage. Use the braking sensitivity to control the car's corner entry and mid-corner balance, while using the acceleration sensitivity to tune the car's on-throttle behavior and corner exits. Generally speaking, you want to set the acceleration sensitivity quite low. To supplement this, you can actually use the dampers to help you, as they control the pitching characteristics of the car. In order to further stabilize the car under acceleration, drop the rear damping ratio compression. This will allow the car to squat more into acceleration, leading to understeer behavior under power. You can further supplement this by lowering the front damping ratio extension, which will stop the front springs resisting the squat behavior. I'll have a comparison coming, showing the difference in handling characteristics between the PS5 DualSense controller and the official Fanatec GTDD Pro wheelbase, running through which one is more consistent and better to drive with. So make sure you're subscribed not to miss it. If you want to support the channel, check out some of the great Fanatec gear and merch we have in the description down below. And until next time, I'll see you all later.